quick video on basically replacing a hard drive and a laptop. Uh, hard drives and a laptop, you can usually find them uh, either on the back of them, if you flip them over how this one here is. There's usually a panel like this here. I've already taken the screws out. There's usually two screws to hold them in. You take it out, you pull it up, take it off, and your hard drive's underneath. Uh, sometimes the hard drives are located in two other common places. Usually along the edge have a piece of paper to cover up the product key on this computer. Uh, but sometimes it's along the edge here or down this edge and sometimes on the front where you basically just have to undo two screws and just slide the uh, a tray out. Uh, sometimes it's part of a very huge panel that takes up you know like half the uh, laptop and uh, you can go through open that up and you find under there. If you don't find it in either one of those two other spots besides like this here uh, it's probably under like the keyboard or the uh, palm rest. In that case, you got to go through and really take it apart to do it. Um, Sony laptops have a really annoying feature where basically you have to take the whole back of the laptop off or the whole front of it off to get to the hard drive. Uh, but Toshiba, Dell, HP Compact, they're all pretty much the same. You have this one panel usually. You, either one of these corners, Asus laptops are the same. And what you do is once you get it open, usually you have a tab. Uh, this one's transparent so you probably can't see it too well. Um, but you have a little tab here. You just kind of slide it a little bit to release the drive. And it should come out. But before I do that, I want to mention that uh, you should go ahead and take your battery out of the laptop before you connect or disconnect a hard drive. Um, they usually have a locking slider as well as an actual release slider. Uh, you undo the locking slider, hold in the release and just pull your battery out at the same time, comes out fine. Uh, this Toshiba here is very oddly designed in that this tab is really only useful for actually pushing the drive in so in this case I'm actually going to just kind of slide it out by hand because you can't get the, the leverage to do it and you just kind of slide it out and uh, as most hard drives and laptops are this one has a carriage drive carriage you see the actual drive here but it has a carriage uh, which is the metal casing around it you got four screws that holds those in this drive is bad here's a close-up shot of the drive. You want to go through and identify what kind of drive you have before you actually order one. Uh, in this case here what you're seeing is a uh, old style uh, sometimes a parallel ATA but ATA6 uh, drive. You got multiple pins on it there. Uh, you see it's got the one blank space right in the middle and then off to the right there that group of four. Uh, those are like jumper settings kind of like that. Uh, so you want to go through and replace with the same type of drive because uh, a SATA drive will not work. Uh, go through and show you. Uh, basically, replacement drive I got here in the bag is another um, ATA style drive. It's a Samsung 160 gig and replace with either same size or bigger drive or even smaller in some cases if you really think you can get by with it. And Another drive I got here is a standard SATA style connector. As you can see, the connections on that is much different than the other drive I just showed you. And there's also one other type of drive you can come across, and it's called a PCIe. This is a PCIe uh, hard drive, and this will sometimes fit in the same kind of slot as a wireless card, but Chances are if you have one of these as a solid state drive, uh, you have a dedicated slot just for it. This is very common on the Asus EPC laptops to come across as one of these guys. And uh, as you see, there's two screw holes up there. You just slide into the connector, screw that down. Uh, but that's uh, something for another video altogether. But the two common drives you're going to have is uh, basically SATA and then the... Uh, ATA6 style drive there. There we go, we got our bad drive out of the drive 
caddy, just the four screws. Uh, you undo that on each side of the drive. Uh, some drive caddies you will have to unscrew at the bottom. Uh, depends on your drive caddy, how you have to do it. But basically there's going to be you know, four screws. I have seen some with only two. Um, where it's basically just a little front tray like that. And you got two screws on each side. And sometimes it's just a metal plate that goes just right around the edges uh, for the purpose of just pulling the drive out of the system. As far as installing another drive, I'm going to use uh, the other one I already have here for the example. It's just basically putting it right back in. Really only one way they can go in because if you put it in the wrong way the screw holes will not line up uh, with the caddy. As you can see they're basically off center just slightly from the uh, top. So the holes in the actual drive itself, as you can see, are off-centered from the top of it as well. So you really can't get this in here wrong. Just like with a normal full-size hard drive, uh, you want to go through, put all four of your screws in, and then go through and tighten them down. With these smaller, uh, two, uh, smaller drive, smaller size drives, I only give them about a I'd say about an eighth of a turn uh, to make sure that they're tight. Um, uh, while on a bigger one, I'd probably give it close to a full, you know, quarter turn. Uh, with these guys, you don't want to tighten them down too much because just like there are larger counterparts, they're made of aluminum, and you can actually go through and strip them out. Now, as far as going through and putting the drive back in, uh, again, there's basically only one way you can do it. Uh, otherwise, they don't line up. Uh, basically, just set them in there. And in this case, I have this little plastic tab to help me push because, as you can see, my fingers are not going to get in there. And I can actually hold it down and push this over and click it in. And it goes in fine. If you had it upside down, you'll find that your um, pins will not line up or just physically won't go in. Uh, if you have to put a lot of force into it, you got it in wrong. So just flip it around. Um, just take a note of when you're putting the uh, taking the drive out, uh, which way the label is facing up. And as you saw earlier, the label is facing up. So once you got it in, just simply put your cover back on and uh, tighten it down, and go ahead and start uh, loading up your operating system, uh, Windows, Linux, whatever you want to go through and use. Uh, I got videos on how to do that specifically uh, for both Vista, um, XP, and Windows 7. Windows 7 and Vista are very similar in how they load up, so you can actually use the same videos for that. And uh, that's it. Just tighten it down, put your battery in, start loading everything up. You're good to go. Here's another little bonus tip for you. Since you already went through, put your hard drive in, all that stuff you got it flipped over, Go ahead and make a note of your um, Windows product key here, write it down on a piece of paper, and that way, when you go through and flip your computer over and you got to type that product key in, you don't have to go through and try holding your laptop up, tilting at some weird angle, and then putting it back down and typing it in. Uh, this will save you some trouble and possibly another hard drive in case you drop in the process of flipping it over like that. So.